Don't give up. God has a plan for you that's good. You could be one push away from a miracle. Today, we're going to look at pressing on from every angle. I'm Billy Joe Darty, and this is 360 Degree Life. Do you feel like you give up on things easily? No. No? No, I do not. Not at all. Not at all. Sometimes. Honestly. It's not worth the fight sometimes, I think. No. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, many times I don't give up when I should. It's kind of that stick to that my dad always said I had. No, I don't give up on things easily at all. I, I wouldn't have been able to last as long as I did if I, <laughs> if I did that. I do what I can. Try not to give up. You know, sometimes you have to, but most of the time I make it a point not to. I like to think that I don't give up on things easily. If there's a goal that I need to go ahead and continue on, I complete it. I set goals and I work very hard to achieve those goals and if I don't achieve them, I'm very upset with myself. Two little frogs that fell into a vat of uh, milk and uh, the one frog gave up. And the, the frog that kept on paddling, he turned, he turned that milk into butter and then something solid happened and he jumped right out. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to give up on anything specific or a person? Wow, that's heavy. Uh, there's a few friends in my life that uh, have made bad choices that I would had given up on pretty easily, I would say, that I wish I'd stuck with them longer than I did and tried to help them out in several ways. I don't give up on things of any people or, or objects. I've got family members that I'd love to give up on, but you know, just something in me just uh, you can't. You gotta, you gotta keep on and be persistent. Don't give up. God has plans for you that will take perseverance. You must press on. Stay with it. Stay in the game. It's not over till it's over, and it's not over yet. In Hebrews chapter 12, the Word of God says that we're to lay aside every weight and every sin and run the race that is set before us with patience, perseverance, endurance, steadfastness, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of God the Father. Jesus is our example. He's the one who went through the cross, through the suffering, through the pain, the agony, the rejection, all the hurt. He paid the ultimate price for us. Why? He saw the joy at the end of his race. He did sit down, victor, triumphant, overcoming by his father. He despised the shame. There was nothing in it that he enjoyed or liked, but yet he went through it. The joy was set before him. And right now, you may not be seeing all the joy all around you, but you can see it ahead. And because of that, you can have joy on the inside of you. Believing God, trusting him, persevering and pressing through. The Bible says through faith and patience, 
we inherit the promises. You see, God has promises he wants us to walk in, that he's promised to fulfill. But without patience, you can't get there. And that word patience means steadfastness, endurance, perseverance. When God spoke to Abraham, the father of our faith, that he was going to have a child by Sarah, it was 25 years before that happened. He was at the age of 100 before it took place, and God had spoken to him when he was 75. All during that time, Abraham was growing in his faith, in his understanding of God, and how to cooperate with God and fulfill the covenant that God had for him. What if he had quit? What if he had not believed and had let go of it all? He wouldn't be in the place today as the honored father of faith. God has a plan for you. It may take a long time. I remember when I was driving down Lewis Avenue in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 1982. I looked over in a pecan field and I saw this giant white building. We had been believing God for a place to go for a church and I'd never thought of this field or this place, but I saw in a vision this building. There were pecan trees out there, but I saw a huge white building. I pulled into the parking lot across the street from that particular area, which happened to be Oral Roberts University, maybe center, their huge building. And I pulled into that parking lot and sketched out the drawing of what I had seen. Do you know, it was 25 years before what I saw in that vision was fulfilled, a building that came to a point right at that place. We had to battle through so many different things and, and obstacles and go through many purchases of different pieces of land and then believing God to go debt free and in all the building process. It has been a battle, but it's been worth it because of the people whose lives are being transformed. You may have a dream a vision, something in your heart that God has spoken, a word that he's given to you. And it looks like it'll never come to pass. Maybe it's of having a beautiful family or living your life victoriously or overcoming a habit, an addiction, something that is a huge struggle in your life. And it keeps pressing you down, standing against you. Don't give up. You keep pressing on. One day, you're going to have that breakthrough because you didn't quit. You didn't give up. You didn't become bitter. And that was an important word I heard years ago. I asked a minister, what can you say to me that would just help me in the ministry if there was just one thing? I remember he was walking across the parking lot and he was on his way, he was leaving town. He had been a guest speaker in this church and he never slowed down. He just turned and looked at me and said, if you don't get bitter, you'll make it. Many people quit because they get angry, upset, and bitter at other people. My word to you is, don't get bitter. Keep pressing on. What do you consider your greatest accomplishment? Oh, the greatest accomplishment is always your family. Uh, Three kids, four grandkids. That's what I'm doing here at the park. I <laughs> uh, would consider my greatest accomplishment probably graduating college. Going back to school. Becoming the manager of K Jewelers right over here. I've got a wife who's my high school sweetheart that despite myself, uh, she's still with me 22 years into our relationship almost. And uh, we've been uh, given the opportunity to have two beautiful girls that, uh, you know, slum to death. They spoil me. My greatest accomplishment, I would say, would be my career. I'm a hairstylist, and it's something that I started late in life, but it's the best decision I've ever made, and it's getting better every day. To be honest, I don't really feel like I've accomplished much of anything in my life, um, but I'm in the midst of building a career as an entertainment writer, which has gone considerably more well, more well in the year that I've been at it than I expected it to, so that's something. What big goals, dreams, ambitions do you have? I've pretty well met most of them. My dream now is retirement, and I've made it, and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> what did it take to get there? <laughs> About 35 years of really hard work. 
<laughs> I am planning to get my accounting degree and hopefully uh, work with my boyfriend to open up a bakery here in Tulsa. Ultimately, uh, Christ consciousness. That's my goal. My main goal for the future is uh, I'm a father, so I just want to be a good dad to my son. Running the Race 1 Corinthians 9 and Hebrews 12 Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, let us not run like men running aimlessly. Instead, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I'm glad that Jesus did not quit on the way up Calvary's hill. Because he pressed on, he did what the Father had assigned him to do. Today, you and I have eternal life. And I'm saying to you, don't quit. What do you have if you stop? You could be one push away from a miracle. You say, well, people did this to me and they let me down and they failed me and they didn't come. Hey, everybody has stuff like that happen. We've all been there. What's up with you? Why would you say that you qualify to quit because of those things happening? Jesus was rejected. He was spit on. He was mocked. He had his own disciples run away from him. And yet he kept on going through the cross because he knew that was what God told him to do. And that if he did it, we would have eternal life. So you pressing on is not just about you. It's about the people that God has assigned for you to touch and transform. And this is a day to break through the selfishness, the discouragement, the depression, the sense of bitterness or rejection or abandonment that you've gone through and say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to forgive. I'm going to forget. I'm going to ask for your forgiveness. And I'm going on. I'm going to press through. I'm going to fight through every attack, every battle, and I'm going to win. I'm telling you, you're a winner. There's power in the Spirit of God inside of you to raise you up and cause you to be an overcomer. The book of Hebrews tells us, Hold fast to the profession of your faith without wavering. For he that promised is faithful to fulfill his promises. So you keep on speaking that word from God. That God who started me on this race is going to bring me through to completion. He who began a good work in you, he's going to complete it totally. He's working in you to will and to do his good pleasure. When I was a young boy, I was running track and my dad was up in the stands yelling. I ran what was called the 440 or one lap around the track. Wasn't real fast, but he was there cheering me on up in the stands yelling, come on, Billy Joe. And when the gun sounded and started off, I went around that first curve down the stretch and I was coming around the back stretch and I heard this voice yelling, come on, Billy Joe, come on, Billy Joe. And I looked up and it was my dad. He had gotten out of the grandstand while I was running, come down, come across the field. And he was running alongside of me saying, come on, come on, come on. Now, I don't remember who won him or me, but we both crossed the finish line. And I've thought about it since. Long ago, Jesus got out of the grandstands of heaven to get in the middle of the race with us. And he's saying to you, come on, come on. We can finish this thing. You can do what God has assigned you to do. You can come out of a lifestyle 
that's been wrong and is taking your life. You can come out of drug addiction. You can come out of alcoholism. You can come out of depression. You can come out of the brokenness that's happened because the marriage, the family, the home has fallen apart. Listen, you can get the job that God has for you. You can do the work He's assigned you. You can complete that degree in your education process. All those things that God has spoken and He has planned for you, don't let go of them just because it's tough. It's tough on everybody. But you know, tough times never last. Robert Schuller said it, but tough people do. And when you begin to rise up on the inside with God's help, you can overcome those tough times. You can rise above them like the eagle is raised up in the face of the storm as you say, you know what? This wind may be blowing against me, but it's going to lift me higher and higher because I'm getting stronger every day. I was getting ready to go to work. I said goodbye to my granddaughters and drove to work, never, not knowing that day would be the last time that I saw my granddaughter alive. And about eight o'clock that night, I got a call from my daughter telling me that my granddaughter wasn't breathing. Within a half an hour, she was at the hospital and I looked in her eyes and there was no spark. Her eyes were totally black. And I knew at that moment that she was probably not coming back. I found out later that detectives had already come to the hospital and were inquiring into the nature of what happened because it was a minor's death. My daughter was in the waiting room in the ER. She was fanatical, frantic, frantic, just a mess. And the police came and took her and she was with Michael, the baby's father, and they took them both to jail. She had been arrested and charged with first degree murder. I kept thinking, this is not really happening. I'm going to wake up and this is all going to be a dream. This can't possibly be happening to me. I didn't raise my kid. I, my daughter's not a murderer. You know, this is not really happening. And I wanted it to, you know, that's what I really wanted to wake up any minute. But that's not what happened, you know. And at some point, it hit me that it was real. The funeral was just horrific. I don't know how to describe you know, my daughter wanted to come and they wouldn't allow her to come. My parents came from Iowa and everywhere and I'm, I'm doing my best not to be uh, bitter, angry and all that. And they're angry. They're all angry at me and pointing a finger at me, telling me, you're a bad mother. You did something wrong and it was all my fault. I didn't raise her right. I could have done something different. Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? You know, why didn't I know that she was, they diagnosed her as being bipolar? Why didn't I know that? Why didn't I see that? I was going into my bedroom, closing the window shades, unplugging the telephone, shutting the door, crawling in the bed, and not talking to anyone. My whole world was falling apart. And I wished, you know, I thought at times that I wish there was a, I could just drive off and never have to come back. You know, they, I'd wake up mornings and I'd want to just, you know, go somewhere, anywhere, just get away from it and be somebody else other than who I was. I thought, I'm quitting. This is it. I've done enough. The uh, psychiatrist was talking to me. At that point, I knew she couldn't help me. I just felt so lost that I knew only God could help me. And I told her, you can't do anything for me. You know, only God can help me. So she said, well, maybe that's true. And she went to her bookshelf and she pulled the book off the shelf entitled Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. And she gave it to me. She said, I think you should read this book. Well, in the state I was in, I took the book, but I really didn't care about Joyce Meyer, the battle or anything. I, I was wanted to be depressed. I went home, threw the book on the table, and got back into my depression. But something happened. While I was in bed one day, the, I just heard this voice tell me, you need to read that book. And so I did. I got up and I started reading it. And right off the bat, she talks about how the devil is attacking our minds and how we have to really pay attention. And I mean, it just grabbed a hold of me. And it wasn't the book so much as she kept saying, scriptures were in the book that took me to the Word of God. And I had to get up 
and go get my Bible. And I actually did that. And I started reading the Word and reading the book, and it started ministering to me in a way I never expected. You know, I, I could think clear. Because at that point, up until that point, I couldn't even think clearly. I couldn't reason clearly. All I could think about was all the negative things that had happened. But I knew, praying out and crying out to God, that He would answer me, and He did. The truth is in the Word. I am a living testimony of that truth. Because I know, without a doubt, if I had continued the way I was going, I probably would be committed somewhere right now. And God kept telling me, you can't quit. You've got to stick with it. I thank God every day for my sanity, for being able to get up in my right mind. I thank Him for my daughter who is now, she was 17 when this happened, and she's been there for almost 10 years. And God ministered to her. And, and He ministered in a powerful way because when I finally was able to go see her, she was a different person too. She ministers to young women now in prison. I know that God has a plan for me and for her. And I know that He is with me and I can walk it out. I can walk it out and be happy and go on with my life and press. Press through it because I'm not allowing it to take over my life. Don't get weary in your well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you do not quit. That's an important word. Don't quit. The good seeds that you're planting are going to grow. They will come up in a harvest. But it takes time. It's a process. Because we live in the time of instant everything and fast food, and so many things happening so quickly. Many people struggle with perseverance, steadfastness, endurance. If it doesn't happen by the weekend, well, I'm out of here. Listen, believe God that He's working even when you can't see it. You know, when you plant a seed down in the ground, it's not going to come up tomorrow. It's going to take a period of time depending on what seed that is. And there are things that you've done that have been planted underneath the eyesight of others. But the day's coming, it's going to be fulfilled. It will rise up. And this is your time to believe. God, you're working even when I don't see it, even when I can't understand it. And I'm not going to quit just because I haven't seen my harvest yet. It's on the way. I'm telling you, you could be one push away from the miracle that God has for you. You may be looking all around you and you're saying, I'm going to starve here and this is going to happen bad there. But what if you did the thing that God told you to do? What if you stepped out and you obeyed Him and you didn't quit and you didn't give up that one push away from the miracle that you need? This could be the time for that. As you depend upon the Holy Spirit on the inside of you and say, Lord, help me not to quit. Help me not to throw in the towel. Help me to stay with it, to run all the way through the race that you've assigned me. Remember, lay aside the weight, lay aside the sin, and run with patience, perseverance, steadfastness, endurance, the race that God has set before you, that's the assignment you have in this life. The job that God has called you to do. The work. Maybe it's with the family, with the home. And you're saying, well, I'm done with this. I'm done with that. Well, if that's what God has said to you, then there's time to lay things down. But if it's just the trouble, the problem, the difficulty, don't let those things dictate your life. Go back to what has God said to me on the inside. Remember, for Jesus walking up Calvary's hill, it was not easy. Going through the rejection, the mocking, all that took place on Calvary's hill, the nails, the crown of thorns, the suffering and the dying, Jesus went through it because He loves you. And if you have never given your life to Jesus, today's the day to do it. Why not out loud surrender your heart and pray with me? Just pray, Heavenly Father, 
I receive your son Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he was raised from the dead. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for me. I receive your forgiveness. I repent of my sins. Thank you for eternal life. In your name I pray. And Jesus, I declare you as my Lord. Amen. you